We're not quite sure if gun violence in movies is harmless make-believe or postmodern moral decay, but we know it's definitely f***ing awesome. These are the top 10 movie shootouts of all time. It would appear there's only one thing left for you to do. And what would that be? Kicking us off at number 10, it's hard to talk about shootouts without Tarantino's name coming up. He's a man with a fondness for graphic violence of all types, and his filmography reflects his knack for it. From the standoffs in Inglorious Bastards and Reservoir Dogs to the vengeful butchery of Candyland in Django Unchained, he's made a career on spectacular gun deaths. We should even mention the shootout from True Romance since Tarantino wrote the script. And while we want to give him all the credit that he's due, our number 10 actually goes to a good friend of his. Friends of yours? I, I, look, I swear, I, I have no fucking idea what the hell's going on here! We're talking about Robert Rodriguez and the badassery that is his Desperado bar shootout. Sporting dual Ruger KP-90s that pop out of his sleeves in what seems like a very unlikely fit, Antonio Banderas kicks off the killing in Desperado with some impressive moves against an entire bar of red shirt bad guys, culminating in a one-on-one -on -one blind machine gun spray and pray and a hilarious amount of empty clips. Desperado is Rodriguez's sequel to El Mariachi, his debut feature that he shot for a rumored $7,000, famously carting the camera around on a wheelchair in lieu of an actual dolly. But he got a serious upgrade with Desperado, and he netted himself a whole lot more guns, blood, and Antonio freaking Banderas with the loot. Next up at number 9, we've gotta love a shootout with the mob. There's the final shootout from The Departed, Hit Girl's incredible pitch black shootout from Kick-Ass, and the inverted Russian mob shootout from Boondock Saints. And while we're at it, we should take a moment to bask in the absurdly over-the-top insanity of Willem Dafoe's reenactment of their front yard shootout from elsewhere in the film. There was a However, our number 9 goes to a relatively unknown cult classic, State of Grace, for its final shootout. The whole film itself is worth checking out if you haven't seen it yet. It follows undercover cop Sean Penn as he returns to the neighborhood that he grew up in as he gets involved with the Irish mob. But the shootout is just spectacular. A far cry from the superheroics of other entries on this list, it's hard to know if anyone makes it out alive. It's slow and tense and brutal and conflicted in its depiction of violence. And the sound is the best part. With everything silent except for the gunshots, the focus rests solely on the death and destruction that unfolds before us, not the acrobatic heroics of a gunslinger. It almost reminds us of another great silent shootout that just missed this list from Road to Perdition. But it's definitely a sleeper classic and it's hard to watch in all the best ways, so any shootout fan should bite the bullet and give it a chance. Next up, we're looking at the next generation savagery directors come up with when they combine shootouts with science fiction. And we've got some awesome choices here, from the warehouse shootout in Robocop, to the police office massacre in Terminator, to another Arnie bloodbath in Predator. And we really wish we could pick the hallway shootout from Equilibrium because it's cool and flashy and campy and a blast to watch, but it's just not quite impressive enough to edge out our number eight pick with the lobby shootout from The Matrix. Please remove any metallic items you're carrying, keys, boost change. Holy shit! It seems like hardly a list goes by when we're not talking about The Matrix, but here we are again with another exemplary action sequence from the film. And this probably shouldn't come as much of a surprise, seeing as how it's not exactly controversial to claim that The Matrix will go down in film history as a classic. And check out this scene. The destruction of the entire lobby is crazy, not just because of how gratuitous it is, but look behind the scenes. This stuff wasn't CGI. It was brilliantly coordinated special effects, and what's more, they've got to deal with actors messing up like this, which would have meant they had to reset the entire gag back to the beginning, rebuilding whatever column and re-rigging it with new charges. It's no wonder the entire sequence took 10 whole days to shoot, what with all the stunts, explosives, and wire work throughout. And the result is a marvel to watch, not so much one of those shootouts where you're on the edge of your seat wondering if our heroes will make it out alive, but wondering just how badly they'll manage to mess up the bad guys. And in this case, it's pretty clear the answer is very, very bad. The 
shootouts certainly aren't limited to the domain of American filmmakers. There's plenty of international claim to the shootout crown. And when it comes to modern full throttle balls to the wall insanity, there's no director with better pedigree than John Woo. That's right, Woo is pretty much the craziest, most recognizable, most influential action director to come out of Hong Kong cinema, and he's got the shootouts to show for it. In fact, he's made such a career of awesome shootouts that most of his movies have two or three that we considered for this list. Hard Boiled has the opening tea house shootout, the absolutely absurd warehouse shootout, and the final long take hospital shootout. And Face Off has one or two shootouts of its own. But for our pick for number seven, we're going with one of his awesome shootouts from The Killer. No, it's not the badass double-crossing shootout in Chow Yun-Fat's apartment, and no, it's not the even higher intensity shootout where Chow and Lee defend a house against dozens of indistinguishable generic bad guys. Our number seven goes to the final epic church shootout that sees the two heroes mow down armed assailants like untamed grass as they burst in through every entrance imaginable, shooting blindly in a scene that took 36 days to shoot and over 40,000 rounds of blank ammunition. This film managed to inspire our earlier pick, Desperado, as well as some other films that just miss this list, like The Professional and Nikita. Yes, it's over-the-top, melodramatic, and gratuitous, but it's all those things in the best possible way, which is exactly why we love it. Of course, if we're going to honor international directors, it's pretty much required that we turn our eye to spaghetti westerns, a string of Italian-made American westerns that emerged in the 1960s. And while Django deserves an honorable mention for its coffin-mounted machine gun massacre, we've got to look to the spaghetti OG, Sergio Leone. A massively important filmmaker for the genre, he's actually one of John Woo's biggest cited inspirations. Known for his bleak use of widescreen, long staring close-ups, and tension more than his actual violence, Leone has enough great shootouts to fill this whole list. Of course, we can only pick one, but it's really not that hard after all. We really wish we could pick the awesome armor-plated final shootout from A Fistful of Dollars, or the train station shootout from Once Upon a Time in the West, but we would be doing this list a great disservice if we picked anything but the good, the bad, and the ugly. For a shootout, there are very few gunshots here, only two to be precise. But that doesn't keep this from being one of the most tense sequences in film history, thanks to Leone's impeccable direction and Morricone's historic score. Extreme wides cut in with extreme close-ups has come to be known as one of Leone's trademarks, along with the circular arena made up for this custom-built graveyard that was thrown up in two days by 250 Spanish soldiers for the sequence. Leone's camera says so much more than his silent characters, and for that, we have to honor this career-defining masterpiece. Of course, cowboys, cops, and gangsters don't have the monopoly on shootouts. We can't forget about soldiers. So we're looking to war films for our number five. There are some great shootouts in the likes of Black Hawk Down, basically half of Lone Survivor, and the sniper battle from the Hurt Locker. But for our number five, we're going with Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> In terms of battle scenes, most people hear Private Ryan and think of the D-Day landing sequence that is certainly famous for a reason. But that's about as much of a shootout as dump trucks are commuter cars, so it has no real place on this list. And although it's an oft-forgotten middle child, the sniper scene is phenomenal. Interestingly enough, the shot taken here is actually based on a real shot, although not from World War II. During the Vietnam War, a Marine Private Hatchcock was engaged in a sniper battle with an entrenched Viet Cong when he saw a glare from the enemy's sniper scope and put a round through the scope and into his eye. Gripping, emotional, filled with restraint, and cathartic in its climax, you probably won't realize you were holding your breath until it's over. Oh my god, I'm so let me not be ashamed. Next up at number four, we're giving it to the geniuses that are Joel and Ethan Cohen. And no, not the Danny Boy Tommy Gun shootout from Miller's Crossing, although that's pretty badass, if a bit cartoonish. We're talking about the masterfully constructed game of cat and mouse between Llewellyn Moss and Anton Chigurh from No Country for Old Men. From the pitch black waiting game through the hotel door to Llewellyn's near escape down a silent alleyway to their duel across the street, everything about this sequence is hyper-realistic, except for maybe the shotgun silencer. 
In fact, the one thing that should most speak to the restraint of the sequence is that, much like the rest of the movie, the hero and the villain never come face to face. Not only that, they never so much as inhabit the same room or even share a shot on screen. And yet, the Coens manage to construct a shootout that's not only functional and dramatic, but memorable and dangerous. Spliced together in a series of almosts and near misses, it's minimalism at its most effective. You wanna play games? To hell with restraint. While we love a seething duel of the minds, we're equally fond of blazing guns and high body counts. Enter Brian De Palma. Yes, he's pretty well known for his untouchable shootout that pays equal homage to Eisenstein and Hitchcock, but our number three goes to the bloody climax of Scarface that sees Tony Montana introducing the world to his small acquaintance. That little friend is actually an M16 assault rifle with an M203 40mm grenade launcher, and even though it was filled with blanks, Pacino grabbed it by the muzzle after firing a volley and burned the shit out of his hand. Another cool bit of technical trivia is that the guns in this sequence were all electronically synchronized with the camera shutter so that it captured the muzzle flashes more effectively. But enough nerding out. Let's just look at the awesome carnage in the shape of multiple explosions, wave after wave of attackers turned into hot lead Swiss cheese, and an unbelievably stubborn Montana who, after dozens of bullet wounds is notoriously still standing. Where other directors on this list have made violence heartbreaking, terrifying, and brutal in equal measure, De Palma succeeds in making it look really, really f***ing cool, even if it was ultimately meant as critical or satirical. But that doesn't take away from the absolutely epic, enthralling, and iconic nature of this shootout, so we're happy to count it as one of the best. Just in case you haven't had enough of westerns, we've got one more for you. And it's not Butch Cassidy, Shane, Open Range, Retend to Yuma, Unforgiven, Tombstone, or High Noon, although those shootouts are all worthy honorable mentions in their own right. For our number two, our pick belongs to one man, Sam Peckinpah and his masterclass of a shootout that is The Wild Bunch. What do you want? We want Angel. You want Angel, no? <laughs> all right. I am going to give it to you. He's an absolute legend, notorious for his violent films, violent relationships, and alcohol abuse. He's rumored to have been so frustrated with his crew's inability to capture real gunfire with their special effects that he grabbed a real revolver and emptied it into a nearby wall, showing them exactly what he was looking for and most likely scaring the out of them in the process. The violence of the film was seriously criticized at the time, but Peckinpah cited a desire to turn the sanitized TV westerns on their heads with a film that actually showed the realities of violence as it appeared on TVs daily in Vietnam War footage. And it'd be a hard sell to suggest that Peckinpah held back with the violence here. Pretty much no one is spared in this legendary suicide mission. They didn't have enough costumes for all the people Peckinpah wanted to murder, so most extras would die, wash off their costumes, then go die again. But the scene is notable for more than just its excess. It's also a landmark in editing and staging, perfectly mixing film at six different levels of slow motion and cross-cutting between a multitude of different arenas of simultaneous action while remaining coherent for audiences. Stay down. We want to hurt no one. We're here for the bank's money, not your money. Your money is insured by the federal government. You're not going to lose a dime. Think of your families. Don't risk your life. Don't try and be a hero. And finally, coming in at our number one, we're looking at the incredible work of Michael Mann. He's orchestrated awesome shootouts in films like Collateral, Public Enemies, and Miami Vice, but nothing can ever live up to the perfection that is the robbery sequence from Heat. The epic showdown between De Niro and Pacino that fans had always been waiting for. The sequence is notable in that it is both incredibly gratuitous, bombastic, and intense, while still seeming to be more real than any other shootout ever shot. And well, that's mostly because it is. Michael Mann put his actors through such a rigorous amount of training in preparation for this film that they pretty much did everything for real. They dressed up in disguises and cased the actual bank during operating hours, escaping undetected in a getaway vehicle. The cops were introduced to and socialized with actual cops. The criminals were introduced to and socialized with actual professional criminals. All the actors spent three months training in heavy weapons in preparation for this film, with the police officers receiving police training and the robbers receiving alternate. 
training. And it all culminated with Mann building a life-size to scale replica of the entire street on the shooting range and putting the actors through a live fire version of the shootout, except against targets, not each other. And the film is often lauded for how absolutely massive it sounds. Now, when it comes to sound effects, most films have all their gunshots, hits, and ricochets replaced by the post-production sound team after the fact. It's probably a safe bet to assume that every other film on this list did just that. And Heat did this too, using three post-production sound stages to simultaneously create a massive mix of the scene, until Michael Mann heard it and hated it, and threw it all out in order to replace it with the audio they recorded on set, booming with the cacophonous echoes of 800 to 1,000 blank rounds per take ricocheting off the walls of the downtown corridor. It's meticulous, visceral, heart-pounding filmmaking, and it's just about the realest example of on-screen gun violence ever committed to film, which is why we think it's the number one shootout of all time. So, what do you think? Did we leave out one of your favorite shootouts? Do you disagree with one of our picks? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more Cinefix movie lists.